Hey there, in this video, I'll share with you an effective method for using dot cross diagrams to illustrate the bonding in covalent compounds. I'm Orlando Broomfield from Chemistry Core. Let's solve this chemistry exam style question together. So for this question, we need to start with the atomic number for sulfur, which is 16, and the atomic number for chlorine, which is 17. The atomic number is important because it tells us how the electrons are arranged on the shells. And we are concerned with the electrons in chemical bonding. The atomic number gives us that information because atomic number equals the number of protons in the nucleus of an atom. But if protons are positively charged and an atom has no overall charge, it follows that the number of protons and electrons are the same. So sulfur has 16 electrons and chlorine has 17 electrons. Now using the rule that the first shell of an atom can hold a maximum of two electrons and the second and third shells can hold a maximum of eight electrons, we can write the electronic configuration or the arrangement of the electrons on the shells for sulfur as follows. So the symbol for sulfur, S, and the electronic configuration, 2, 8, 6. And that for chlorine, symbol CL, will be 2, 8, 7. Let's draw the atoms given the electronic configuration of each. So I will use S with a circle around it. The first circle here will represent the nucleus. So let's draw now our first shell and I will use dots on sulfur. So one, two. First shell is full, so we need to go to the second shell, which has eight electrons. And I will go around one by one at first and then pair up after. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Two and eight, that's 10 already. No, six to make 16. And for that, we'll need the outer shell, the last shell, also called the valence shell. So now we're gonna put on the valence electrons for sulfur. One, two, three, four, five, and I'll put the other one over here, six, only because I want my diagrams to look a particular way. Now let's draw the atom for chlorine. Again, I will use Cl, the symbol for chlorine. The first circle represents the nucleus. Second circle is the first shell. On the chlorine, the electrons will be represented by cross. So, one, two. Now we'll draw the second shell with eight electrons. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And the valence shell with the valence electrons, seven in total, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. The outer shell for sulfur, the valence shell, is not full. It does not have the maximum amount of electrons. The same is true for chlorine. Sulfur needs two more electrons to have a full outer shell and chlorine atom needs one electron. Because the outer shell is not full, the atom is in an unstable state. 
So the reason for which atoms participate in chemical bonding is to gain a stable electronic configuration or a stable state. So being a nonmetal sulfur and chlorine too, a nonmetal means that they will share electrons in order to obtain their stable electron arrangement and we'll use dotted lines to show the shared pair of electrons for sulfur and chlorine we are noticing that sulfur needs one more electron to bond to pair with which means we need to draw another atom of chlorine so i'll draw it right here so cl for the symbol the first circle will be our nucleus the second circle is the first shell which has two electrons one two that's full the second shell with eight electrons that's four and that's eight and the valence shell with the valence electrons one two three five six seven and now i will put dotted lines to show what will happen between sulfur and this other atom of chlorine they will share this pair of electrons and finally we are ready to draw the diagrams for the compound formed when sulfur bonds with chlorine let's start with sulfur symbol s and this time we only need to draw the valence shell so notice up here that there are two pairs of electrons on sulfur that are not involved in bonding while there are three pairs of electrons on each chlorine atom that are not involved in bonding. These are called lone pairs. So I will put the two lone pairs on sulfur first. One, two, one, two. Next, I will draw the valence shell for each chlorine atom, but I'll draw them overlapping the valence shell for sulfur. I will put the shared pairs of electrons in the overlapping areas. So that's a dot and a cross, dot and a cross. Then I'll put the lone pairs of electrons on each chlorine. So Cl, Cl, and I have one, two, one, two, and that is the third lone pair on chlorine atom over here. And then this one, one, two, one, two, one two let's add some notes over here we have sulfur each sulfur atom will have two one two lone pairs of electrons and two bond pairs of electrons each chlorine will have one bond pair and one two three three lone pairs of electrons lastly let's write the formula of this um, compound so just to isolate it a little bit let's put some square brackets around it and the formula let's write the formula above it we first write each element in the compound S and Cl and in the position subscript right we place the number of each element in the compound we have one sulfur we do not write one in, in um, formulas and uh, for the chlorine we have one two two and that completes 
all the diagrams that we need to have and all the little details that we need to have to show the bonding between sulfur and chlorine. Thank you for watching another video on solving problems in chemistry with Chemistry Core. If you were tuned in, you are now able to use information given by the atomic number of nonmetals to use dot cross diagrams for illustrating how electron pairs are shared as covalent bonds are formed. Good luck on your exams and I'll see you next time.